Hey guys, what's up? Today, I wanna to explore this little intervention on fiber because you know it's a common objection with the carnivore diet, with animal-based, even though Paul Saldino eats a lot of fiber actually. Point is, fiber is a big topic in nutrition. It's a big concern. People are like, on carnivore, you're gonna get colon cancer, bro. You're gonna be constipated, bro. And this is normally based on association studies. You know, we're looking at uh, this factor is associated with this factor. And what you could actually do is you could say, this is ice cream sales and this is sunburn, right? And well, if the ice cream had seed oils, this actually could be causal to an extent, but you get my point. These things would also be associated, but independently that cannot be causal, right? So we see, you know, some associations of lower incidence of colon cancer and people who eat more fiber, maybe because people are told foods with fiber are healthier, healthy user bias. Right, there's this whole muddy body of literature in terms of fiber. So today I want to set aside that muddy water of body of literature and look at this intervention. Okay, so this intervention had 63 people, and here's the baseline diet these people had, the baseline symptoms. All of them had constipation. All of them had strain opening. Doesn't sound fun. Half of them had bloating. Half of them had anal bleeding, and then. 20% of pain. These are the people, the 63 people, this is how they report it. Now, they put some on a high fiber diet. What happened? 20 to 50% had pain. Anal bleeding increased. All of them had bloating. The constipation and strain remained. We can see that in intervention quite clearly. Then we put them on a reduced fiber diet. Constipation reduced. Strain reduced by almost half. Bloating reduced by almost half. Bleeding reduced, pain reduced. Then, this is where it's very clinically significant. We took the people on a decently high baseline fiber diet. We put them, 14 of them, to zero fiber. In all 14 of the people, all of the symptoms were gone. All, all. And when we're looking for clinic, clinical significance, look at this chart. You take 14 people with constipation, all these issues, pain, anal bleeding. Half of them had anal bleeding. You take out all the fiber, all seven of those people with anal bleeding, it's gone. All the people with constipation, it's gone. All the people with pain, it's gone. That's clinical significance right there. So, you know, a lot of these studies are, are more associations of, oh, you have a 10% relative risk, this, if you have this much fiber, of cold and all this just confounded garbage. And those aren't actually addressing people with symptoms. Those are just looking at these like muddied outcome, you know, even the relative risk is it's fucking nothing. 10% relative risk is zero. But the point is they're looking at these sort of disease outcomes, which of course we have no heart health outcome in human science. And this is looking at what happens when we make interventions in people suffering. Because like I said earlier, people don't really care if how often they're defecating, if their defecation is large or small. People care if they have pain. People care if they have symptoms. So what happened? Because you know, if you're on carnivore and you shit once a week, but it's a lot, it, you have no issues doing so, you have no constipation, no pain, no bloating. Okay. Now, if you shit five times a day, Maybe that would be a concern if you shit every day and you have no issues, no, like no pain, no constipation, no bloating. Neither of those are cause for an intervention because they have no symptomology. Now, when we have symptomology and we make interventions to fix the actual symptoms at their core, and this is what we see, I've never seen a study more convincing than this one. It's not perfect. No science on humans will ever be perfect. But this is interventional and this has huge clinical significance. When you take a group of people with 100% of constipation, then you take 14 of them and you take all the fiber out of their diet and then all 14 of them fix their constipation. All of them fix all of it. I've said it before. I mean, there's nothing more clinically significant than that. That's insane. And you know, I've been on a no fiber diet for 90% no fiber for 
years now, and it's been the best choice I've ever made. The bloating, the all these issues just go away. Now, what I'll say is you need to have a lot of fat in the diet, you know, fair bit of fat. I like raw butter from a farm. Uh, it's very nutritious, more nutritious than beef fat normally, actually. Uh, it's very, it has that lubricating effect in your diet. If you go super high protein, low fat, low carb, well, you'll be in rabbit starvation. Um, you will get lean, but you'll have digestive issues. But, you know, in my experience, and I have a school community with like a thousand people, a lot of them have been on this diet. You just see mostly positive things. No one's really having digestive issues once they're adapted. You know, if they follow my, my proper protocols, they're fine. You know, because there is a way to do a diet, any diet wrong, of course. So you guys just want to hop on and show you guys this study. Tell me what you think in the comments. What do you think of this? I think this is pretty significant. I've you know, most of the fiber literature is not interventional. It's stupid. This is. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Think more about your fiber intake. Look more into fiber. Is it all is it all that good for you? Look into its anti-nutrient effects. Look at this. Look into all the, look into it fermenting into ethanol and aldehydes even. Think about that. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Peace.